Why then are you also here? To underline my cleric's words. And to warn you that the foundation is not toothless. We have technology, ships, arms capable of laying waste. We sue for peace not because we fear we will lose, but because we know with mathematical certainty if there is war, we shall win. Hmm. On Trantor, Brother Constant and Polly sit disheveled in a holding cell, surrounded by guards. And while Polly feels they failed their mission, Constant remains optimistic. As Brother Day and Demerzel watch on, they consider the rising tension regarding the Foundation. When Demerzel suggests that Day postpone his wedding to Sereth, Day recognizes her jealousy and assures her that she will always have a place in his family. Elsewhere in the palace, Rue and Sereth discuss her speech at the arena, and Rue cautions Sereth against embarrassing Day. They are interrupted by Demerzel, who escorts Sereth to the medical bay for a physical checkup before an heir can be produced. On the way, Sereth confronts Demerzel about being a robot, and she doesn't try to hide the truth. Demerzel explains that, to her knowledge, she is the only remaining robot in existence. In the past, robots were bound by three laws that prevented them from harming humans, directly or indirectly. But now, her only directive is to serve the Empire. When Sereth asks whether or not Demerzel will serve her as Empress, she avoids the question, simply stating that she will always serve the Empire. During Sereth's physical, the doctors begin the preliminary process of artificial reproduction, but Sereth refuses stating that she will only bear an heir once she is legally married today. As Demerzel tries to convince her otherwise, Sarath tries to embarrass her by bringing up Demerzel's romantic relationship with Day. In response, Demerzel ushers the medical staff out of the room, demanding a private conversation. In a cold and heartless manner, Demerzel recalls the precise and calculated way that Sarath's family was killed, implying that she was the one who carried out the Zeppelin attack. As Sarath finally realizes the truth about her family's demise, she is overcome with grief. On Ignis, Salvor chats with Gale, and while Gale claims that the Mentalix are the key to defeating the Mule in the future, Salvor can't shake the feeling that something sinister is happening, as she has felt her powers dwindling. However, the conversation is cut short, as Josiah informs them that a feast is about to begin. While the other Mentalix prepare for the feast, Salvor meets with Loran down by the docks, who has been fishing for ghost mollusks. Loran apologizes for pretending to be Hugo in the forest, but Salvor notices him suspiciously staring at a boat being pulled onto the shore. Preparing the feast, the ghost mollusks are boiled alive, causing a fierce supernatural emotional reaction in Salvor and Gale. Tellum explains that it is an increased form of empathy due to their heightened telepathic powers as a group, but Salvor remains unsure. As everyone gathers to eat, Gale begins preaching the theory of psychohistory and tells them about the threat of the mule. With support from Tellum, she implores the Mentalix to band together and embrace their powers rather than hide them as they can change the galaxy for good. While everyone else rallies behind Gale's words of encouragement, Salvor's worry only strengthens. Meanwhile, Hober Mallow continues his chat with the Spacer leader. She is center, aboard their giant ship, the Home Swarm. On behalf of Harry Selden, Hober offers her a vial of synthetic opalesque, a micronutrient that Spacers require to survive and is currently supplied by the Empire in exchange for their servitude. Hober proposes an alliance with the Foundation, as their new Whisper ships will soon render the Spacers obsolete in the eyes of the Empire. However, she as Center secretly betrays Hober and makes the jump to Bell Rios's ship to turn him in. When Bell, Glewen, and She Bends Light board the home swarm to retrieve Hober, he breaks free and releases Becky, causing a distraction long enough to slip away in the spirit rising. In the wake of Hober's escape, Bell informs Brother Day and Demerzel of the Foundation's new Whisper ship technology and their attempt to ally with the Spacers. When they rudely end the transmission without giving Bell any further orders, Glewen suggests that they might want to consider abandoning the Empire and supporting the Foundation. However, Bell disagrees, fearing the lawless chaos that could ensue if the Empire were to fall. On Trantor, 
Day meets with Sareth in the gardens to discuss their marriage plans. Barely hiding her fury, she tries to instill some guilt in Day by describing how wonderful her family was before they were murdered, revealing that she is aware of Demerzel's hand in the Zeppelin attack. Soon after, Sareth meets with Dawn in the tunnels below Trantor, using facial scrambling devices to hide their identities. Handing him a device that will reverse his medically induced sterility, Sareth states that she has to marry Day for fear of her life, but if possible, she wants to bear Dawn's child instead. Although unsure at first, Dawn agrees, and the pair share a passionate kiss. At the same time, Constant and Polly are brought from their holding cells to the throne room to meet with Day, Dawn, and Dusk. Although Polly pleads his case, things get more interesting when Constant begins to speak, and a partial hologram of Harry appears, which was planted in her mind back inside the vault, stating that his full consciousness is back on Terminus. Harry begs Day for peace, as the Foundation is mathematically guaranteed to be victorious if a war breaks out. Laughing off the threat, Day reveals to Harry that he is ending the genetic dynasty, and then electrocutes Constant, freeing her from Harry's control, before she and Polly are dragged back to their cells. Back on Ignis, Salvor examines the suspicious boat and finds that the map data has been erased. When Gale arrives, she cautions Salvor against causing problems and pleads for her trust, regardless of how she views the Mentalex. That night, unable to quell her curiosity, Salvor returns to the boat and hacks the navigation console, leading her to the seaside pool where Harry was drowned. Discovering his body in the water, Salvor is shocked, and to make things worse, Telem appears and uses her abilities to instantly render Salvor unresponsive leaving her floating face down in the water next to Harry's corpse. 